so it's uh, Sunday afternoon here in Northumberland. I'm just heading out to, um, to help Jack and Alison. I believe they're drawing fat lambs. By that I mean they're, they're picking the ones that are at the correct weight uh, to sell. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how we ask clients to collect my meg samples. So they're dung samples. And it's really easy to do. It just is a few small pointers which can come in useful, make sure it's, we get the most out of those results. So when you're collecting samples from a group of lambs, a really easy way to do it is if you're running them through the pens, a brilliant thing is sheep eat a lot of grass and a lot comes out the back of them so you don't have to wait very long uh, to get a sample. And so you can see uh, this is one of the pens where um, we had these lambs a second ago and there's samples everywhere. So there, there, there. So how many samples do you need? Depends. You probably need at least half a dozen if they're being looked at individually. If you're doing a mob sample, you probably need between 10 and 15. Um, and remember, you need to take a random selection. You don't go looking for the skinniest lambs or the fattest lambs. Um, they need to be taken in fresh. So they need to be less than an hour old when they're taken. Um, taking them into the vets as soon as you can. If you're not going to take them in that day, refrigerate them. And generally what I'd say is don't take them in on a Friday because what happens is they tend to sit there all weekend um, and old samples are never as good in those. The eggs tend to hatch and they can give you an underestimation of how many worms are in those lambs. So random, you need to take enough and they need to be fresh. So you, we've got our samples here, ideally, you have some clear plastic containers you can bring into the vet. Now, not many people I know will have a ready supply of these. You can get them, um, but what's just as easy, uh, and as a vet we have lots of, are long plastic gloves. So as I said before, you need probably anywhere between half a dozen and 15 samples per group. So, I'll find a sample. You shouldn't need more than about a tablespoonful. So we've got it there. What you can then do is put that down in your long glove. Tie a 
knotted it. And then collect some more. So there you go, you form a chain like that of however many you can fit in your glove. Uh, and that's a really good way to bring them in, as long as you bring them in fresh. So when you need a sample from an individual sheep, first thing you should do is you should put a glove on, a little bit of lube on your finger, restrain the sheep properly, just lift the tail, find the bottom, a couple of fingers in nice and gentle as you can imagine, and just use your fingers and just grab, gently massage out what you need. Again, you don't need much, so that's what that's what you need, simple as that, job done. So I would always involve your vet in conversations like this, discussing and interpreting worm egg count results. They're really useful, they're not foolproof like anything, and it's worth knowing, if you've gone to the trouble of the test, how to interpret it. So for lambs, there's probably three scenarios when we'd consider using them. First is if we're investigating lambs that aren't growing very well. Second would be just to monitor in healthy lambs, lambs that are growing well, doing well, but we're looking to nip any problems in the bud. And three, it's when we are investigating possible resistance to worm products. And the way you do that is you go in on the day of treatment, you take a baseline sample and then you treat and you return a certain number of days later to sample those same animals. And then using those results you can clarify whether that treatment has worked or not. So I hope that was a useful little video, not too long, if you've got some comments, if you disagree violently with anything I've said, say below, otherwise I'm going in for my Sunday dinner, have a good week.